and we are live how's it going everybody it is thursday it is slightly afternoon uh we're waiting on chris to show up so uh let's see who we got here so far we've got rose how you doing rose ookie pookie yuki pookie <laughs> uh we got tahara and little bit both of my super mods honeybee is here hey everybody I'm glad you could make it today. I'm glad I could make it today. I have had a hell of a week, I'm telling you. I've had some really, oh man, just some nutso things. Um, and I do have some comments about the election um, as far as Liggett winning. Uh, I'll get to that in just a minute here. Hey, Gail. Hey, Alicia. Tommy, what's up? Um, <clears throat> we... Uh, I want to remind everybody about the uh, membership levels that we have offered. We have the Seekers and the Destroyers. I'm going to be pumping out some content over the next couple of days because I need to get caught up. I was uh, extremely busy and extremely distracted for the past couple of days. I did get a new phone. Look, it's new. <laughs> I got a brand new phone because I could not unlock my other one. Hey, Trust and Justice, why are you frustrated? I'm frustrated too, but, you know. Um, so I... I I don't know what happened. I mean, I did not, um, I put a password on it, but I put the same one I always put on it. It didn't work. So if it were to be an error, then I would have had to have made that error twice because they want you to, oh, is it, is gifting? Okay, cool, cool. I, I didn't know about gifting memberships. I didn't know if it was available or not, but it is. So there you go, everybody. Stephanie, how's it, how's it going? I'm your favorite. Well, that's great. I love that. I, I, people tell me that and it's, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Um, uh, I accidentally fell in and we'll catch you on the replay. Okay. <laughs> you can't stick around, Debbie. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, yeah, I don't understand, uh, exactly, um, what happened. I know, um, I put, I, I put a password on it, but I put the same one I use on everything else and it didn't work. And like I said, I had to verify it. You know, you had to confirm it. So I would have had to have put in the exact same mistake twice. So I went through and I, um, no, I didn't copy and paste it. I actually typed it in. Um, so uh, what I did was I went in, I tried to, I tried everything. I mean, people were sending me links and I tried everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh trust and justice is frustrated hey mindek what's up trust and justice uh, is frustrated because these youtubers say this is what happened and this is what it is and they don't and they don't they truly don't know what happened yeah i understand that we you have to look at the totality of all the evidence and i'll get to that in a minute here while we're waiting on chris um hey alice good to see you I need to add, or I need to uh, explain something here about um, the uh, election. They say it was close. A close election is 51 to 49. This was what, 55 to 44 or something like that. That's not a close election. Um, the reason I think there are two main reasons why Liggett won this election. Number one, because they waited until right before the election to make this arrest. They've been looking at Richard for a very long time, since before the river search. And um, they waited until now, right before the election, to make that arrest. I consider that legal malpractice. Um, but nothing surprises me coming out of Carroll County. So that was one of the reasons why Liggett won. The other reason why uh, Liggett won is because Mark Pinkert was a terrible candidate. I mean, he... You know, I didn't want to say this before. I think I mentioned that I didn't like his demeanor at the debate. He stalked around the stage and, you know, acted like he was just pissed off, you know. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it just, it bothers me because that's the wrong way to be. You don't stalk around the stage like you're all pissed off and everything when you're in a debate. You stand there and you be professional. And regardless of the, the ignorant responses that Liggett had, he was the more professional of the two people in that debate. The second thing that Mark Pinker did is ignore people that offered to help him. I personally have 40 years of experience in politics, people. I have been running campaigns and working in politics and working campaigns for 40 years. 
four decades. That's probably not uh, much less than what uh, Mark Pinkard has been on the planet. I offered him help. I offered to come to, to Delphi, Carroll County, and go door to door for him. And he completely ignored me. I invited him to come on here on this program several times to make his case why he was the better candidate. He completely ignored me. So, Mark, you got yourself to blame for this one, bud. You should have accepted help when people offered it to you. Um, um, Stephanie, Mark was not working at the Walmart at the time of the murders. He was um, he was working at uh, CVS. So that's right. That's right, Yuki Puki. No one wants an angry candidate. They don't, you know. Um, hey, Braden, what's up, bud? <clears throat> so um, here, uh, Shameless Smith had a uh, uh, a question here. How do you know they were looking at Ron or at uh, Richard Allen for a while? Well, we know that Peanut. <laughs> we know that uh, there was a parallel there. Okay, there was a parallel between the uh, river search and, you know, well, between murder sheet and um, the actual truth. I talked to Kevin and Anya the other day. We actually went out and, and uh, met them and my wife and I, we sat down, had, had uh, drinks with them, not alcoholic drinks because Anya's in recovery. Um, and I wouldn't do that to somebody. I, you know, I, no. <laughs> um, Yes, he was working at CVS at the time of the murder. He just wasn't a licensed farm tech at the time. He got that later, but he was working at, uh, yeah. Actually, uh, Alice, send me that case. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, we've got some stuff we, coming up uh, sometime very soon in the next couple of days. We're going to have a discussion with someone about the Summer Wells case. And uh, she seems like she's pretty uh, into this case. So we're going to see what she's got to say. Ah, there's Chris. Okay, we're going to bring Chris on here. <laughs> Chris has written a book called Forest for the Trees, and it's about Ron Logan. So we're going to go ahead and bring Chris in here. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Hey, what's up, Rick? Hey. <laughs> um, we were just talking about um, the, uh, well, let me, let, me, let me say this. I was disappointed with the uh, election results. Um, right. in Carroll County. But like I said, I, I put the blame on Mark Pinker because I don't think he was that good of a candidate. He, he repeatedly ignored people that offered him help, not just myself, other people I talked to. Mm -hmm. um, he could have had people going door to door for him. He could have come on any number of YouTube shows and he just chose to ignore it all. So, um, but anyway, let's get to what you're here for. <laughs> uh, Chris yeah. has written a book and like I said, it's called Forest for the Trees. And uh, I read it just recently. You read the last chapter of that book, people, and tell me that Ron Logan is not involved in this crime. So, um, Chris, what made you want to write this book? I um, started on the Delphi journey uh, about four years ago. It was after the murders. It was about, uh, and thank you for having me. I really, I like your podcast. Well, thank you for coming. Well, thank you, yeah. Um, I started four years ago. I met one of the mothers of the mm -hmm. girls, the victims. And I said, I think I can help you if you want my help. This was a year after the murders had taken place. I knew about it when it happened. And it was very shocking to me. I was like, wow, this is a really creepy case. And this is strange with this video and, and the guys there. It, was, it, it felt like a horror movie to me. Okay. And I get a lot of requests to work civilian cases. I work a lot of famous cases. I'm out here in LA. I, I was a movie and TV producer, writer for 20 years. And so I got in the true crime space about eight years ago and I was on a very famous case before the Delphi thing. So I was kind of getting my feet wet and kind of learning how to deal with killers and accomplices and family members. And so I met one of the moms and, and she was nice. And, and we were talking via Facebook and I said, if you want my help, I'll try to help you. No one had been caught. It'd been a year. It was like a full year, maybe a year and a half. Right. And I, really only work cold cases, okay? Um, obviously, because those are the people that need to help, I'm not gonna work a case where they've already caught the killer. What's the point? So, unless it wasn't him, right? right? So we had some back and forth and I said, why aren't you guys looking at this Ron Logan guy? I say, I see this limp in his leg, in this right leg. 
when he walks up in this interview, I started doing my own research and I watched the Stephen Fabian interview and Emily Longnecker and I start doing my thing and Googling everything. And I say, this guy has a very unique walk. Okay. And it's in the, it's in the right leg. Now, mm -hmm. when I watch bridge guy, I see it. I see it plain as day. Then I match the body type, the belly, the height, the ratio of the, the torso. I start lining it up. Looks like him, six feet tall, 230 pounds, whatever he is, pretty big guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then I hear the voice, okay? And I go, that's him. Like, what? he's just saying mm -hmm. down the hill. He's saying it in a different kind of intonation, if that's the right word, instead of down the hill, okay? Mm -hmm. There's two people here. There's an angry version of a man on a bridge pointing a gun at two girls to get down the hill. Okay. Then when Stephen Fabian says, do you want to say down the hill, down the hill, it's a totally different type of person. It doesn't mean yeah. it's not him. Okay. <laughs> now the way the journey kept going is, so I said, what about Ron Logan? I went to ISP. I went to Carroll County. I didn't care about a reward. Those rewards are a farce. Okay. I've, I've worked with a lot of pieces. Well, they're a ruse and they're going to, and, 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 and it's just the way they do those things kind of rubs me the wrong way. You know? Yeah. There's a $300,000 reward. Okay, it's Ron Logan. Where's where's the money? Oh, we got to get a conviction. We don't have any evidence. Oh, you don't have any evidence, huh? So so anyway, I told the family, the, the one mom, and then I told the police, and nobody wanted anything to do with me, right? I'm from California. I'm the outsider. They want nothing to do with me in a small town in the Midwest. No problem. I walked away for two years. Mm -hmm. Almost three years, really. Okay. I walk away. One morning, 6 a.m., an assistant of mine, another investigator that I work closely with, sends me an email and calls me and goes, you need to see what just leaked out of Delphi. And it was the FBI search warrant. What a coincidence. And, and everyone and everything in there is Ron Logan. And that set me off like a time bomb, man. And it brought me back. So I noticed um, with this arrest um, of Richard Allen, a lot of people are saying, you know, we got BG, we got bridge guy. A lot of people, except for the investigators, the people that are involved in the case, the people that are working it, mm -hmm. none of them have said BG, bridge guy. None of them. He can't be. He's not. The because he guy. can't be. It, it's clear evidence. If you got people, if you, if you get the book, the last chapter of the book is lays the case, lays it out perfectly. It's, right, I do like a mock right trial. There. Yeah, I do like it's a mock right trial. Yeah. So, um, so I'm. We you know, when I, look up, at, I mean, if you want to bring up the imagery, I mean, I can. You know, we could show them. You know, the overlays. Like I don't know. Yes. If you see it too much. You know, this let me work, I have that. Um, let me see if I can find that so I that can was show given, it to them. That was given to me by Leo's. Uh huh. That no one has, and that was commissioned by the prosecutor's office, Robert Ives. Okay, let me see here. I am going to find that real quick so I can show everybody because it's not just that either. There's there's other uh, there's stuff a lot and of there are other images that we yeah, can look at too. Yeah. And I tried to. Let me see. You know what? I don't know if it's all good. I mean, look, we can. They can email me. My email is investigatorla19 at gmail.com. My door is open. I'll give free copies of the book. It has nothing to do with making money. People make mm -hmm. these comments on Reddit. Get a life. Like, get, <laughs> just, seriously, shut your mouth. Like, just stop protecting a murderer. These people that stick up for Ron Logan, to me, you're foul. You're foul people. And, and you don't solve murders. You're not investigators. I solved one of the most famous murder cases in human history. I already have the credentials. So I looked at I say, that, by the way. That that interview that you uh, linked Thank me you. to on that case, yeah. I looked at it. That's interesting. Yeah, That's very interesting. And I was lucky. I was in the right place at the right time. The guy told me he was kind of involved, but I had to put a lot of the pieces together. But the point is, I know how killers think, okay? Yeah. And I know how accomplices think. I know what a whistleblower is. I was a whistleblower myself. They want to talk. Emily Longnecker interviewed Ron Logan. So did Stephen Fabian. You are talking to the killer. 
You're not investigators, you're reporters. I don't expect you to know what a killer is doing. Ron Logan lies on tape and says, well, I was in Lafayette at the time of the murders. No, mm -hmm. you were not. No, he wasn't. No, you were not. And you lied about your alibi and you told your cousin to create an alibi for you before any of the bodies were found. How'd you know? Why'd you need an alibi for Ron? What's up? Nobody exactly. knew they were even dead. But you did. And right. if you look at it, he asked for an alibi because people say because he was afraid to let them know he was driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are suspended, like if you're on a suspended license because of a DUI, it doesn't matter whether you drove the Lafayette or down the road to the dump. Right. He starts out by admitting he drove to the dump. Right. He's already in probation violation. So why does he need an alibi for driving to Lafayette? And Not already, to mention the fact. And they, and they already ahead. knew he was driving all the time anyway. They had yeah, all, all that's what I was going to say. Was <laughs> they already knew he was driving all the time. Yeah. You know, it's a small town. People saw him driving all the time. <laughs> and so, also, yeah. look, and the FBI agent in the search warrant says they were intentionally trying to deceive us. Okay. Because at first the cousin two days before he, I think it's a, he, they say she, he, I don't know who this cousin I've is. I've heard it both ways. I've heard it yeah. both ways in the search warrant. It says it's a he. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they reference a he, but then two days later, I lied. He told me to lie for him intentionally trying to deceive us. That's illegal. First of all, that guy could go to jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's concealment of murder. That's a felony. It's also obstruction. Okay. Oh yeah. And, 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 you know, there's a lot more than just this alibi, but you know, I always talk about evidence, like when, and we've talked about this before too. You gotta be careful when you say, what evidence do you have? Okay. A defense attorney. And in the case of Richard Allen right now, and I saw the letter and everybody's printing about this letter. I'm throwing myself at the mercy of the court. Let me tell you something right now. I'm surprised there's no defense attorney lining up at the door for Richard Allen. Cause when they look at all the evidence against Ron Logan, mm -hmm. that is going to create tremendous doubt in the jurors mind. Cause they're doing this case away from Delphi. They're not going to be from Delphi. Oh, yeah. Yup. Right away. Look how fast it's gone because you guys didn't solve it. Not, and I'm saying that in a nice way. Your community, you you missed. And and they know they need a different judge. They need a different jury pool. I'm sorry. You had five years, Delphi and Carroll County. And I know you're mad that some outsider from California wearing a pink shirt came out to your, to your thing. But guess what? I did it for Abby and Libby. I'm solving your murder for you. If Richard Allen's the accomplice, go get him. That's what I said in the, in the mm -hmm. interview. Go right. get him. You did a great job. Nobody said his name. I think I know how he was revealed to them. I don't know. There's two theories. We can talk about that. Well, um, what, what would you like to say about that? That's that's because that's something I've thought about. I'd ask frequently. you first, too. I'd say, what do you you? Why don't this is your podcast? Why don't you kind oh. of set it up? Tell me, what are you hearing? You're on the your boots on the ground. You're close with the people close to the case. What right. are you hearing? How did they get on to Richard Allen? Well, the story that I have is this child molester, this Marco Salinas, was arrested and they started questioning him about the same way they questioned uh, Kagan Klein. Mm -hmm. And they kept going at him, going at him, saying, you know, telling him that they had him, you know, involved in the murder and everything. And he eventually said, you know, hey. I'll tell you what you want to know. And he gave up the name Richard Allen. So I don't know if uh, Marcos was um, involved in some way, like maybe he was mm -hmm. like a lookout at the at the Freedom Bridge or at the, the CPS building or whatever. And then the other way that they say um, he was that he came up is someone turned him in for stealing something and then they came to his house. But the reason I doubt that and then they arrested him and they did a, a DU or a DNA test and he and he hit. But the reason I doubt that is that um, they I think they used the uh, stolen pro property excuse so that people wouldn't talk about why they were searching. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and when people say um, how much um, when they're asking about the uh, the search warrant and all that kind of stuff, you know, I, I have a lot of people saying, you know, that they like, OK, here's a good here's a good. Uh, the theft from the neighbor is too much of a coincidence. That's the kind of thing I'm hearing that it, it would just be too much, you know, of a coincidence. And that well, they, we don't find you know, an arrest. We don't find an arrest of him. I searched right. that. He searched. I had someone close to do the search going back two years. There is no record of him being arrested and mm-hmm. they wouldn't know he's involved in the murders. They would arrest him and they have no idea. The DNA would take days to come back. So right. I think that story doesn't work. Now, the Salinas guy, and I read the information on his violent crimes. He's going away for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's gone. And and yeah. Could he flip on Richard Allen? Sure. The question is, how did he know this? How exactly. Did, did exactly. Richard Allen confess to him? That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay. That these guys knew this and, and Salinas didn't come forward before. And now the Kegan Klein, if he's the other admin on the Anthony Schatz profile, right? And now Kegan Klein flips him two years later and he now... He knew Richard Allen, then Kegan's getting more charges, but they just dropped five charges against him. Right. And it, to me, the telltale sign is the police don't come to you and say, well, if you don't talk, we're going to charge you with this or that. They right. charge you and then they say, right. we'll drop the reduce the charges if you talk. So it, to me, if they were, if they thought Kagan Klein had something to do with the murders, they would have charged him with murder. Yeah, the the Kagan, we know there was some involvement. We've talked about this before. Other people have talked about this, and the media has driven this Kagan Klein thing because they like to show the pretty picture of the fireman who lives in Canada, and they they get all into this. And to me, it's disgusting. Like, no offense, right. but and I know a lot of the reporters. I talked to them. Two of them just wrote me this morning. I talk to them a lot. They do fake stories. They print fake news. They don't solve anything. Okay. How, like, let's just get back to the Ron Logan thing for a second. You have a tape, you have a video, you have photographs, you have his voice and you can't figure out it's him. And you're in a small town. What's up? How do you guys not see it that it's him? You either covered it up, right? Or it hurt too much to say he did it. But do you think it hurts more for the families in the community to live in fear? They think there's someone out there, another murderer. Okay. And I told, I told someone yesterday, this thing's going to volcano soon. And it's, and it's, and everybody's going to get burned. Like it's going to be really, really bad. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's when the trial starts. I don't know if it's next in two weeks when the PC comes out, right. When they re- release the probable cause they are, there's going to be a volcano. Oh, yes. And I think that's one of the reasons why they have the record sealed right now. Yep. People are mad. they know it's going to be a problem. There's going to be a mob mentality. And I know they just had this sheriff election. They're going to look at the police real close after this. How did you not know it was Ron Logan? How did you not know it was Richard Allen? He worked down the street. He was living and walking in the town. Now, the reason Richard Allen gets an out because he's not BG. He's not on tape. Right. It's not him. You you had to, to open Pandora's box, right? You had to get Logan first. And that's why this thing sat stale for almost six years. In today's day, in 2022, you mean to tell me with all our technology, that's why I came on the case. Because I said, wait, there's a video. There's a video. He's moving. He's walking. He, that's He's there. They, he's pixelated. But they can zoom in. They can clean that up. People came forward and said, that looks a lot like Ron Logan. It says it in the search warrant with the FBI. Multiple people said, that sounds and looks like Ron Logan. Well, well okay. And, and where's the aquarium store people? Where are the statements from them? Where's their statements? What time did Ron Logan show up to the aquarium store? You didn't want to ask them that? Wasn't that important to see if he had if he lied about when he was there. So there's a lot, but the technology point is, you know, we can't let 
Delphi and Carroll County or the state of Indiana set us all back a hundred years of forensic technology for their one case. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you can't. And, and you made it a national story. You did your press conferences. You went on all the stations, right? You did your little press tour. Your stories come to my feed in LA. So when we say, oh, this outsider's coming in, then stop talking about it in my town. Then stop, then stop telling us out in California about, about your great police work. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times um, with this case, the everything goes back to Carroll County being completely unable to handle this type of a case. You know, they, I remember when it first happened, they said something about, um, well, I think we had a, a homicide about 10 years ago, you know, that tells you right there, you know, they can't even remember if they had a homicide 10 years ago or not. But these people are trained in an academy, okay? And it doesn't take a lot of rockets. The problem is the prosecutor. So the first one was Robert Ives, dereliction of duty, first off, right away. Because, mm -hmm. and, and same with the guy now, Nick McClelland, whatever his name is. They reached out to him. They tried to talk to him. Nope. Didn't want to talk to anybody. Well, now you're going to get burned because you guys, the prosecutors, the DAs, it's their job to, to prosecute the case. It's not the police. The police have to build the case, go to the DA, right? And say, mm -hmm. I think we have enough. Why did the DA not have his own investigators? Why didn't Robert Ives have his own investigators go start sniffing this out. Why? Why not? That's your job. That's what you get paid for. You, those are your constituents, your citizens. Two girls get tortured in front of each other. There's a lot of things about this murder that have not even come out yet that I know right. from the Leos. Mm -hmm. It'll make your head spin. Okay? And the public, they were never shown an autopsy. The families don't, e don't even know how they were killed still to this day. The public has no idea. Stuff is leaked out. Yeah, Reddit's all over it. And yeah, there's some stuff. You, you know a lot about the case. So, you know, there's just a lot of these, but it takes common sense. That's what I'm saying. I don't care what cop you are, Texas, Florida, North Dakota. Use common sense. The girls are found on his property. He's home. It says his phone is he's active. He's right there. So it's just, it's sad. It's sad too, you know. And the point that you made in the book is that in any other case, any murder case, if a body was found on somebody's lawn, they're getting searched. Didn't Your door's here. getting kicked in. Didn't You're happen. Not being here. asked anything. And I mean, Leos, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And the Leos, look, the, the Leos are courageous. When they came to myself and, and the other private investigator who I thought was going to come on and we could invite him in if we want. What mm -hmm. I'm saying is I am, I am hard on people too. I was a whistleblower, okay, on a very famous organized crime case. My life was in jeopardy myself, okay? When I was approached or when we were approached and when I began my discussions with these Leos on the case, very close to the case, okay, I grilled them and said, why didn't you kick in Ron Logan's door? We should have. And at least they admitted it. And I right. found that noble because I'm not going to let you off the hook either. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say like, oh, pat these guys on the back. 24. No, no, no. Why didn't you kick in his door? We should have. Was he home? Yeah. Did he mm -hmm. come outside? Nope. He's hid in his house. Okay. So let's think about that rubbernecking. Most humans, if they see a car accident, they're going to look. If you had police officers walking in your backyard, you're not going to come out and go, what's going on? Like, is there a, a fugitive on the loose? You're going to sit in your house? Yeah, because you're guilty. And they should have right. had blood. Yeah, yeah, and they should have had bloodhounds. The bloodhounds would have picked up the scent of Abby and Libby's blood. Literally, their scent also. They would have run right back to Ron Logan's house. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, right away, following the trail. They can be trained and told to hit on certain scents also. They can differentiate the scents of the killer versus the victims. Do you know how far Ron Logan's house was from there? 1,500 feet. Do you, know, do you know how far a bloodhound can search? 100 miles. Oh, yeah. Oh, Months yeah. Months later, 
<laughs> so, but my point is the Leos I felt were courageous and I felt they were being honest. Oh, we saw this cleaner, this orange cleaner sitting outside out of place. We didn't really realize it at first till we watched later on the body cam. Footage. Yeah. And that's on body cam footage. Right. Yeah. Well, why is the orange cleaner sitting out in the winter out of place? Because he went and cleaned off the bodies. That's why they're found wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is the hoodie wet? Like we talked about too. Why is that hooded sweater uh, wet? Because he's dumping water on him with orange cleaner. Why is there no DNA? Right. Leo say there's no DNA. That it came from I, a lab technician. Peanut. My dog's causing me some issues. So <laughs> oh. do they have Richard Allen's DNA? I don't know. Did they miss it? Did the Leo's? I don't know. It's a little fishy, man. Look, it's a great mystery right now, too. There's a lot of like, and I think, and I think everybody's important. Even all the podcasters. I know there's like 10 of them. Okay. They're all important. I'll say that. I'm not coming after them. I'm, I'm not mad at any of them. I've had discussions with a few of them. We know Ron Logan's involved. Mm -hmm. Even if Ron Logan didn't kill the girls, he's double murder. He brought them down to the killer. He walked them at gunpoint down the hill. That's double murder. So right. My uh I I had something up about the floor of things. I want to get to that in a minute yeah, here, sure. but to answer Glenn Davis's uh, point here, he says his property isn't a lawn. It's a huge wooded area, huge with easy public access. That's not exactly true. It is not easy public access. You have right. to go on to private property right. to get to that. Mm -hmm. And unless you knew, because the Webbers who live right next door to Ron are religiously guarding that property. I stepped foot off of that bridge and within minutes, the Webbers were on to me. And they were telling me, you know, this is private property. You got to go. Um, it's not easy to get to, you know, um, as Ron said, you got to walk to get there. Um, oh, by the way, thank you. Uh, thank you, Juana. Um, appreciate it. Well, that. you can, and also to Glenn Davis, you can give him prop, you can give him props. You know, he wants to put up um, an idea, which is partially true. It isn't a lawn. There's a, right. you, know, you have to go out into the woods. I get it, but we don't stick up for murderers. I, I don't yeah. care if it's easy to get to his house or it's hard. I don't care, to be honest. Okay. It's his property. Two girls were murdered. Always look at the case through the victim's eyes. And if he didn't do it, then clear them. Then search his house. Why don't they, why didn't they search his house for 30 days? Mm -hmm. Who would that to me is who, the biggest what, thing? What does that make? Does that make any sense to you? And when and also when one of the reporters asks. He's one of the top ISP guys. He's like in his car. This was years ago. And the reporter, I think she was from Chicago. And she's basically, she's basically asking him, why didn't you search Ron Logan's house for 30 days? He just brushes right over the question. He goes, well, we've been in contact with Mr. Logan from the very beginning. That's not what she asked you. She didn't ask you if you knew Ron Logan. She asked you, why didn't you search his house? And he won't give the answer. Right. See, in a lot of murder cases, I've, I've, been, I've been in freaking depots and trials and threats of lawsuits. I'm in one right now. I'm in a big murder case um, trial situation, depots to trial. The way you can solve a lot of murder cases is who does not talk. And you also solve cases by the things that do not come out to the public. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why that ISP officer is refusing to answer the question. Exactly. Okay. He's not going to tell you, well, we've been talking, oh, you've been talking to Ron Logan. You know what, guys, in I, at ISP and Keiko, Ted Bundy said he didn't do it too. And right. so did John Wayne Gacy. He didn't know any of those boys, never seen them before. Stop. Okay, this is what I've learned working with killers themselves, doing books and movie scripts with them. They're, they want to tell you, but they're not going to tell you straight out. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have to figure it out yourself. You had plenty of evidence to kick in Ron Logan's door. You know why he goes to Lafayette? Because he bags up all the evidence in a trash bag. And he's he got to get rid of this stuff. And he's going to go out there. And even somebody said at the aquarium store, I had a source come to me and talk about, he bought a bunch of random fish that would all die together. Like, it didn't make any sense, his purchases, right? So he just needs to be somewhere 
in Lafayette, <clears throat> right? And he needs to mm -hmm. buy something. But the problem right. is his timestamp is 521 p.m. And that gives him plenty of time. Those girls are killed between 2.30 and 3 p.m. And he, all he has to do is walk up, it's a walk up that hill back to his property, wash off some blood, bag it all up, put on his other jacket. Oh, and, and general public and everybody out there, you know, did you know this? And this is what the Leos told us too. Did you know Ron Logan owned five of those jackets? No, That's, I read that from the search warrant. They recovered, or I read well, somewhere they well, recovered. Well, but nobody knew that. And no, that, I don't think that's even talked about in the search warrant. I'd have to, you'd have to pull it up and look at it. I don't believe that's talked about. No, so, it's not. I, I remember, um, I, I misspoke when I said search warrant. I remember reading. Um, but I'm I, saying, I, but why didn't the public know that? What's up? Why are you hiding that fact? We call it the Dean Kamen effect. Dean Kamen wears the same pants and shirt all the time. Oh, you don't think that's important for investigators to know? Wait a minute. Of course, he's not wearing the bloody jacket. Right. But he's wearing the same identical one. And why is he wearing the same ball cap? And then, and then two weeks later, when he does another interview and he knows there's footage, he comes out wearing a bright red shirt and no baseball hat. No hat. <laughs> and, and so it's common sense, you know. But I'd like, you know, we could talk about the Richard Allen scenario, too. I thought the way... You laid it out, and that's why I gave you a shout on the TV interview. That's very plausible, like the way you right. laid that out. Yeah. Um, I wanted to say real quick about a true crime with Shannon and FBI damage video from that marathon station. Um, I contend that that is a fable, uh, Shannon. Um, all of that stuff that came from Murder Sheet, it's almost like they're allegories, you know, like they're uh, stories that are, because like I said, they talked about a fire pit search. They said it was at Kagan Klein's mother's or grandmother's house, you know, but I know for a fact it wasn't. So where it was, was actually at Richard Allen's, you know? Um, so all these things that they're coming up with have kernels of truth, but they're not completely the true story. The, I look at it this way. Well, what's if, the point of this marathon station? Is this the Kagan Klein Googling. Yeah, they said that Kagan Klein searched for the marathon station in Delphi the morning of the murders. Okay. Now, here's my take on that. Do they have proof of that? No, because they say can the they FBI damaged the, digital, the video. Yeah, can they show us the digital footprint and his um, of course stuff not. from his IP address? Can they show us that? <laughs> of course not. And the thing about this whole thing is, people, you have to use your critical thinking here. If Kagan Klein communicated with Libby the morning of the murders, as they try to say, and he told somebody, as they think, you know, as they tried to say, he told somebody he was supposed to meet her that day. Absolutely not true. But if they did that, if they believe all that, and then they have him searching for the marathon station in the city of the murders, the day of the murders, why isn't he charged with murder? Mm -hmm. You know, that whole marathon station thing, basically what it was is what happened very early on, they had a suspect, Jim Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And that's why they got the, the search warrant to search the Maxwell's house. The reason they searched his house is because someone saw him at the marathon station dressed like BG. So they went to find the video of mm -hmm. Maxwell dressed like BG. Uh. And, you know, Carroll County messed up the video is my take on it. I don't think it was the FBI. If it's true that the video was damaged, they weren't looking for Kagan Klein because, like I said, no way Kagan Klein searched for that marathon station because they would have arrested him for murder the minute they found that out. They Well, That's supposedly, not. and also supposedly, they have GPS data that Kagan Klein is in Peru on right. the day of the murders. Right. And his, and his father. So what's up? So, oh, let me guess. Let me guess. They're going to say someone... He didn't have his phone. He left his phone at home, right? And so it's pinging and getting texts and all his activity. Someone else is doing it. And, and this is what these people do. And like I said, I'm not mad at the podcasters. I'm not mad at these true crime people. But remember, all of you need to come together to solve a murder. Stop telling stories to, to sell T-shirts and to sell mm -hmm. your own podcast. That's not the point. You're going to be, you're going to come off as fraudulent. Because now, where was Richard Allen's name? Oh, wait a minute. 
Wait, oh, so Kagan had nothing to do with it? And you just slandered him and his and his family for a year and a half? Be careful. Be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and look, the, the game of phone, things spin way out of control. And right now with the Richard Allen thing, did they find evidence at his house? Did they find clothes? There's blood. We don't know, right? Okay. He kicked in the garage. He went to the thing. But the, the Salinas guy... He flipped. He knew somehow. Okay, what what's going on in your town? Like, like let's let's first of all in the Flora girls. I talk about in my book the four girls from Flora. I dedicate just a very short segment because somebody asked me to, so I did. Okay, that was a Carroll County murder case. They said there were accelerants found. They said it was intentionally set. No one got arrested. That's four right. African American girls got murdered. What's going on in your county? What's and it's it's amazing to me. It's been longer. And they have a suspect in this case. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, he's a Carroll County deputy. He had accelerant on his clothing. You know? Okay. And this was, he went into the fire because, in my opinion, he, he realized, oh, hell, there's four kids in there. You know? And he realized it was no longer arson. It was going to be murder. Yeah, I don't know that theory. I've 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 looked at a couple things. Obviously, the mother should be looked at first. The neighbor, there's a neighbor supposedly didn't like them. But mm -hmm. you know, with, with what you're saying, I don't know too much about it being someone like of that stature. And you know, I don't really look at the case that much. I have another case. You know, we talked about this other murder that was out in uh Peru, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at that now. I am gonna look at it. And I believe it's solvable. We don't know if Richard Allen's involved. Maybe. Right. I mean, who knows? The years. There's close in the years when he moves to Delphi, right? It's the same year. So, but a lot of times the clues for murder cases, they're, they're there. And there's people that want to talk. And as years go by, the spotlight's still on them. And people start to mess up. They start to talk. They start to brag. Richard Allen kind of looks like he's bragging a little to me, mm -hmm. right? He approaches the family, gives them the pictures for free. They say he, he gives weird looks to them when they come in the CVS. He approaches them in the aisle. That's what I'm hearing, okay, for yeah. people. He's re-victimizing. He knows, I don't want to use this analogy, that Native Americans with the scalping and the thing and the living, they... When you kind of, or like a Dracula type thing, we talk about this in Hollywood. If you commit a murder, you steal their soul. You, you, yes. you own them forever. And I mm -hmm. know it sounds creepy, but it's, it, you got to look at it, right? So if Richard Allen sees the, the Patties or, you know, the Williams, you know, or the other, uh, the other mother, he might want to go up and talk to him, right? Why mm -hmm. did why did Ron Logan give one of the moms his cell phone number a month before he died? And I got that from one of the moms, literally. Why? Because he still wants to hurt you. He's still hurting you. Because he knows he beat you. Yes. See? So it's, it's in my book, I talk about, as you saw, I kill killers. My mm -hmm. job is to kill killers. If they're dead, shame them, out them. And there's other people around that could be involved that covered it up. They should pay. The people that may have known they should be in concealment of murder. The police have to right. be exposed, right? For not knowing it was him. Okay. And also one thing that I, I, I don't know if I talked about in my book is I came forward on another murder case pretty recent and they didn't want to listen to me again. It's getting dangerous now. Now, when I come to someone and I go, you need to look at this person. I have some evidence. I have sources. I, I see something here that maybe you don't see. And you don't arrest that person and they go kill somebody else. Right. Ron, Ron Logan could have murdered two other girls. And so could Richard Allen have if he's the killer, too. It's getting mm -hmm. dangerous. And that's what my assistant was trying to show me. He was trying to tell me, like, you need to you. I need you to come back, Chris. And I did because. People are going to get killed people. And I'm not saying I'm like Mr. Wizard, um, you know, but if I'm on a certain case, listen to me, listen to me, look closer. I'm putting you on a trail. I'm not the cops. I can't arrest Ron Logan, but 
but I told you it was him. I told you. And I have in writing, we put it in writing to ISP. I have it. We said, we'll help you. And this was way before um, Richard Allen was arrested. This is before I wrote the book. This is after the FBI search warrant came out. We described to ISP, you have a PR nightmare coming down your, your pike right here. You have no idea the storm that's coming your way. And they told us to kiss off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, B Dash Lee says, uh, why would they lie about him searching for the address to Marathon? Um, I don't think they did actually, because I don't, I've never heard the police talk about this marathon search. I've only heard Murder Sheet talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't heard the police talk about it. I think, I think he might have said it was in the uh, the transcripts. I haven't read those transcripts for probably almost two years now. Which one? So, the uh, oh, the uh, interrogation. The interrogation, which I've you know, in interrogation, they're allowed to lie, and they often do. You know, they'll say, "Well, we got your DNA, we got your fingerprints," when they don't have anything. Yeah, they yeah. that that interrogation is one hundred hundred and ninety four pages. I've read it twice. That thing is a mess. Yeah. So that it's a mess. And there's other lawyers that have looked at it and said they went way too far. The way they're, this is a fact. You wrote Abby and Libby. Kagan says, no, I did not. He says, I did not. I don't remember them. I don't remember. He denies it 50 times. And then finally says, okay, I guess if you say it's me, I guess I did it. That's not right. a confession. That's not, it's badgering. It's badgering. That is exactly how a false confession happens. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and a defense attorney is going to ride that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to read it in court. That's why, you know, I'm fascinated with the Richard Allen thing and Ron Logan. We don't have photos of them together. Nobody's come forward to say they know each other very well, right? Have you heard right. anything of that? Not yet. I'm still that's, looking. <laughs> that's interesting, right? We're not getting any. But when if a trial occurs, that could be two years from now. This is where people are not understanding the continuances, right? The discovery of new evidence. Yeah, he might request a speedy trial. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The prosecution is going to keep digging for new information. They can keep continuing the case. So yeah, this thing is going to cost a lot of money, right? This is going to. There's going to be a bunch of new famous investigators who are. I'm kind of walking away. And people made comments about me saying, oh, he's going to walk away now. Okay. The reason I'm walking away, because I did everything I could for you. I tried to help you many times. I already wrote the book. It's in my book. If you want my involvement, go read my book. You want a free copy? Email me and I'll send you a free copy. Don't give a crap about the money. Don't ever say I do anything for money. So, And so you mentioned just, yeah. several times throughout the book. Um, the absolute stone walls you ran into. Yeah. So I'm going to keep chasing your murder case when your police forces don't want me involved. I reported it to the FBI. Nothing. I tried to reach out directly to the agent. Nope. <clears throat> so, you know, in this, and this is this reoccurring theme that I see. That's why I keep doing it. A lot of people ask me, I mean, look, I have kind of my own job. I run my own business. I, I, this isn't, I don't make money doing this. This is, this is, I wouldn't say it's a hobby, but for me, I'm trying to help murder victims. I'm not like the judge. Remember the judge called the town, the blood lust. I, like, yes. <laughs> I mean, like, ser like, seriously, like right now, Delphi and Carroll County is just like digging their own hole with this. You know what I mean? Like, the judge recusing himself, saying people are bloodlusting. He's being threatened with lawsuits. Well, excuse me, Your Honor, you guys are violating some constitutional rights of the of the accused right now. Why is he writing a letter saying he has no attorney? Mm -hmm. What's going on? He's supposed to be appointed an attorney immediately. Why is he writing that he has no attorney? And right. Now, well. I guess he said that uh, in the beginning, he um, he was going to get his own attorney. Right. And then now he's saying it's going to cost too much. His wife had to leave her job. They got to leave their house. Well, if you're not living in the house anymore, sell the house, dude. You know, I mean, he's throwing himself on the mercy. Yeah, of the but court, hey, this is know? very strange. I mean, we're on what's today's November 10th. When was he arrested? 
October uh, November fourteenth. I think. No, no, or no, no, that was the search. No, no, he's, no, no, no. He's uh, October twenty sixth. Not November. October. Yeah, October twenty sixth. Yeah, yeah. It's before yeah. Halloween because the Halloween they do the press conference, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's almost two weeks. He has no attorney. That doesn't make any sense. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. And and no one knows who his attorney is. Like there's no like it seems to me like right now, the police and the lawyers are throwing everything out the window and are just doing it their own way. And that's not going to help them prosecute Richard Allen. I'll tell you that right now. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of doubt. I mean, this is going to get really weird. I've just dropped uh, Chris's uh, Gmail um, address in the chat there. If anybody wants to take that down. Yeah. So um, Lost for Life says he could have met him at CVS. That's my theory. My theory is that they they kind of connected over Ron picking up his Cialis or Viagra <laughs> or whatever, because he had a 36 year old girl. Well, girlfriend, actually, the case you know, the was, true story about that, right? Yes. She had to have a home and, you know, she had to have a residence to, to be released from jail or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he told her, yeah, you know, you give me a little every now and then and you can stay here with me. So and that's a 77 year old man with a 30 something year old girl. Right. So I'm thinking he had to have some outside help to firm things up. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, I'm thinking maybe he's at the the CVS getting his prescriptions, you know, and and uh, you know, yeah, Richard said possible. something like, no, you know, for... oh, got a hot date or something, and then Ron said, oh, my girlfriend's half my age, I gotta have it, you know, and then he might have said, oh, you like them young, huh? And that's how they could have connected right. over liking young girls, right? You know, um, there's many ways, and as Honeybee says, or at bars. You know, they were both drinkers. They could have met at the bar. You know, yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. actually probably more plausible too. But the thing is, I just it's a little strange to me that no one's come forward to say, yeah, I saw them together. I've I've seen them. Like I would expect if, that. I don't know. It okay. doesn't make sense. So. Okay. Yeah. It's 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 very quiet. And also, we're in a black hole right now with the case because you still have two weeks before they do the PC trial or hearing mm -hmm. to see if anything's going to come out. Richard Allen has no attorney, you know, but, but, oh, but here comes the media printing all their articles, talking, blabbing their gums about Richard Allen. Why aren't you guys talking about Ron Logan? You know why they're not? Cause I said it was Ron Logan. So they're like trying to stay away from me. And that's why there's a chapter in my book called cowards and cover mm -hmm. because the book's not just about Delphi. It's about our media being cowards. Right. And you don't you don't yeah. name them, but it's not too hard to figure out who they are. <laughs> yeah, I didn't name them. I mean, I'll name them in interviews. They, I don't really care. And I and right. I call out a couple Indianapolis reporters. Yeah, you told, told me who you, they were the first time we I, talked. Because I told you because I told them personally and I dealt with them for months. One guy called me some guy. Some guy from the West Coast. I'm some guy who solved the greatest American cold case in modern history. Email me. I'll show you. I'll show you. He, but I was some guy. The other reporters, well, we can't run. I go, listen, you don't need to say Ron Logan's the murderer, but why aren't you investigating that he is the murderer? Why aren't you interviewing sources and PIs and myself who has the credentials and the and be the Michael Jordan of true crime? Why are you not listening to me? And that's what all these things kind of combined inspired me to write that book because I wasn't going to do a book. I'm not a great writer. I'm not a writer, like to say it that way. I wrote it to put it out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's other people trying to write a book. I already beat them. I'm the first book on Delphi. Mm -hmm. No one can ever change that. And they can write books that it's Richard Allen and Ron Logan's yeah. a fraud. And they, go ahead. That's your business model. Do whatever you want. What I liked about the book was um, you say you're not a writer. Um, to me, reading the book was just like sitting here talking to you. Yeah, right. That, you know, I was just like having a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was, uh, you know, actually um, a plus in my book. You know, I uh, my writing style is very similar. Um, I like to just make it like it's kind of a conversation type thing. Yeah, and I tried to keep out like the typical true crime book on February 14th at 12, 17 p.m. The two body... 
I don't do that. If you look at in the very beginning, <clears throat> I don't even give you an exact time of the drop off. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, yeah, they got dropped off around 1 p.m. The murders happen around 2.30, 2.45. I'm doing that on purpose. Right. Because I want you to understand, and this is going to sound crazy, and I like to say shocking things. There's no such thing as evidence. Stop, stop looking for evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. God knows if Ron Logan did it. God knows if Richard Allen did it. The killers know. Abby and Libby know, but they can't tell you, right. but they can, they can show us things. And when I saw that Richard Allen picture and then the background is at a restaurant or at a bar, there's the sketch and it's behind them. And it gave me a weird feeling, right? Like, mm -hmm. is this the girl showing us something? You know, I'm still in shock. I still right now can't believe that people still think bridge guy is not Ron Logan. I still, I still am like. And also, I think, um, like I said, if you look at the last chapter of the book, you lay out all the evidence. Right. And I don't know how anybody could see all of that. You know, I've had people tell me, well, you know, those those uh, GPS coordinates have been debunked. By who? A YouTuber? You know, I mean... <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. Well, we don't have exact, we don't, you know, Ron Logan's phone pings. Yeah, he lives there. We get it. Okay. He lives by the bridge. Okay. But the FBI agent purposely says he's outside of his house. She's saying he's not inside. Right. And, and, and I always challenge these podcasters, YouTubers, P, uh, armchair quarterbacks. Were you trained at Quantico? Are you, mm -hmm. did you go through the FBI Academy? No, you did not. And that's why the thing with the murder sheet people, they need to slow down, okay? Right now, I've been told they have an ISP source, okay? Mm -hmm. That is leaking the murder sheet people. If that FBI search warrant was sealed, it's a felony. It's well, a felony. I think the Ron Logan search warrant, what I've been told is his lawyer, um, I've been told that... Uh, Ron told his lawyer to release the the uh, search warrant affidavit when he after he died. I mean, was Is this source way of credible? Do you have a credible source or what? Uh, yeah, I think it's somebody you've probably talked to before. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, well, I uh, mean, look, they okay. One of the mothers, I'm giving you inside information too because I'm coming forward. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name the family names. One of the mothers told me that ISP high up personally called her and said it was accidentally leaked by the courthouse. We're sorry. Yeah, okay? that's what they yeah. told her. Now, that sounds fishy. It was accidentally leaked. And then, oh, wait, but the murder sheet podcasters knew the exact moment to go get it. Oh, they exactly. just Oh, it's been sitting up there and only the murder sheet people were the ones to find it. You got to go by the smell test a lot of times on cases too. You got to use Occam's razor, the simplest explanation. I believe that the murder sheet people have a mole at ISP or, K mm -hmm. or Keiko, and that is leaking them stuff. Now, the question would be is, why are they leaking them the Ron Logan thing if they're so hot and heavy on the keg and Klein? Yes. Right? That's a good question. Is it is it to confuse people? Look, if Ron Logan said to Aki and says, yeah, release my thing. Okay, that's interesting. And we'll give Ron Logan some credit if it's true, mm -hmm. okay? And and that lawyer should be grilled about it then. And he should be, it should be known. I, I highly, I've actually spoken to him. I doubt he released that, to be honest. I have a source that said it was actually leaked by a separate attorney in a different county. I've heard that too. Mm -hmm. From uh, Miami County, was it? Is, is that mm -hmm. what you heard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that too. And I don't know now, is right, would that be to defend the Kleins? Like to say, well, you guys are looking, you're barking up the wrong tree. Look at all this evidence on Ron Logan. You know, I just think, I mean, I just, this is one of the most fascinating American cold cases I've ever worked. I'm mm -hmm. going to say it right now. I've worked over 15 of them. Right now, this is so topical 
it's so fluid it's fascinating and that's why you have 20 podcasters and all the people there's people from england there's people from australia they are talking about your case it's not my case i'm in the city of angels it's 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 your case i just tried to help and i have to shake trees rattle cages that's just kind of my style that's just what i do it's how because because I already know you're going to fight me on it. So I have to fight you back, you know? Right. But um, yeah, right. we should look at any questions you have or anything else you want to talk about. I mean, about Richard Allen. I mean, you know, wouldn't Richard. Ron well, Logan real quickly, yeah. I wanted to address that blonde chicks. Uh, wouldn't Ron Logan have the common sense not to leave the girls on his property? The thing is, that was probably the best place he could leave them. If he tries to transport the bodies somewhere else, he can right. get caught with it. Right. He could be seen on a right. security cam. Um right. You know, many, many, many things. He could leave a trail of DNA or something that they could follow. So I think the best place for him to leave them was on his property because then you have him at eight, you got him texting somebody, and at 10 15, you got him texting somebody. Yeah. And I think, and I think, yeah, moving, moving bodies is not a good idea because you're going to drag evidence and you're going to be putting your DNA all over them again. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty hard to hide a body. I know some people disappear forever, not many. There's not many. Most of the time you find the body, the dogs come out, the, people see you. And also, like, I think Ron Logan's a little crazy, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you murder two girls for no reason? Like, he's not a normal person. I think he's all hot and bothered on it. Down the hill. Here we go. He is full steam ahead. Get him on the, cross the, the creek, cross Deer Creek. If Richard Allen's waiting for him. Hey, hey, girls, come on over here. Take your clothes off. They're going, man. They're going. Like, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, they don't take, he doesn't take them back to his house. It's right there. It's going to be fast. Not fast for victims. That's, that's a torturous thing. And that's why these people have to pay. Ron Logan has to pay. Even if he's rotting in hell right now, he needs to pay. And the police need to be exposed so that other people don't get murdered on other cases. Look at Flora. What if that person goes and burns down somebody else's house? What's up? Like it, it's, and also I've always said this too, jurors, and then I'll address that last question. Jurors convict people, not cops, right? not judges. People do. You should have tried Ron Logan. You should have, you should have taken mm -hmm. him to court. You had enough evidence. You should have, you should have went for it. And that might've even scared Ron Logan to never do it again, even if he got off because then you'd have a spotlight on them, okay? And and the Richard Allen thing might've popped up, but to answer this last question, and why not snitch on Ron, uh, Richard Allen? He can't, you have two devils. This is the two devils theory. They can't flip on each other because they're both there. So if Logan says, Richard Allen did it, all Richard Allen has to say is, how do you think they came to me? Ron Logan brought him, he's going in. Now he mm -hmm. could try to cut a deal. That's That point might work, right? Right. You could cut a deal and say, look, I'm going to flip Richard Allen if you give me 10 years. They may not give him that deal. They're not going to be hot on that deal because he's already coughed it up, too. Right. Yeah. They don't need to give him a deal. They can say you're going to fry. And if you want to maybe get, yeah, you want to reduce sentence, then and you there's an accomplice, you know something, then, yeah, we'll try to help you. There's no guarantee in, in a situation like that. Um, WNC Gypsy says, look around, Logan is dead. We may never know if he was involved. Actually, um, if the police want to make the case, they're going to have to admit he was involved. Right. So if he was, we're going to know it because they are not going to be able to ignore Ron Logan. Because like you said, any defense attorney worth his salt mm -hmm. is going to come right out and say, hey, what's all this evidence about Ron Logan? Why yep. are you hiding all that? Yep. So yep. they've got to come out and say, you know, which is why, like I said, I've been through this a lot, uh, you know, many, many times. I have not seen anybody connected to the investigation. That would be Holman, Liggett, uh, the other detective. I can't remember his name. Um, Toe Blesenby, uh, Doug Carter. I haven't seen any of these people say Richard Allen is bridge guy. Right. None of them have said it. No. They've been asked and they say, well, we have enough evidence. We had enough evidence to get a probable cause warrant to arrest him on two counts. They're being smart. Look, I think I think there's some redemption for Doug Carter, Tobe Lazenby, Liggett, 
all these guys involved and girls. I think that's why I talk about in my interview on TV about there's a chance to win. You guys got Richard Allen. Good job. Nobody knew it was him. You did it. You got, you missed Ron Logan. Okay. So you missed, and this guy from California and this other PI and people like you, Rick, and the other podcasters, and they released the stuff. Yeah, we got Ron Logan, but you guys have the guy who's living. You get your trial. McClellan gets to prosecute. Carter gets the pat on the back. Okay. Right. So it's, it's a very unique situation, right? But whether even look, people are never always going to believe Ron Logan is involved. Even if they bring it up in court, it doesn't matter. There's other famous cases where people go to jail. There's people that think Ted Bundy didn't do it. And Gacy mm -hmm. like, Oh no, they got, it was the Unabomber. I had a guy say that the Zodiac killer was the Unabomber. Okay. <laughs> and he sold a bunch of books. No, I know the guy he sold a bunch of books, even though everyone was pointing at Arthur Lee Allen on the Zodiac and even uh, the, the other guys and they Gary Poste and they're doing, but one guy said it was the Unabomber and he has an audience. So mm -hmm. we're never ever. And that's why I think it's a good point. This, the gypsies making here. We, you don't have to believe it. He's dead. Even if Ron Logan told you, I did it. There's some people who say, no, he didn't do it. He's too old. He could, you know what I mean? So that's why these murder cases, it's not a perfect science. There's not, it's very gray. I had these police one tell me, Oh, you're very gray. And I'm like, they're like, we need things black and white. I go, life is not black and white. It's not, especially when you have killers, they're not going to tell you all everything. Even if they tell you this is what happened at the, a lot of times killers lie about the murders too, right? She got it. This the Brittany Drexel, you know, the Brittany Drexel case, they just got the guy. Finally, after all these years, she was kidnapped in uh, South Carolina, Myrtle beach. You know, that case. You know that one? Yeah, the uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. He says he says she wanted to smoke pot with him, mm -hmm. and so you know they hung out. They didn't hang out. You kidnapped her, dude. You think she'd go hang out with you, some creepy dude? She's like a teenager walking <laughs> home. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we smoked some pot, and then we yeah, that dog don't hunt. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like you have to like another book I wrote, which people can email me, and I'll show them the other books. I wrote another book where it talks about that same situation. Okay. Like you got to be really careful when they open their mouth. Okay. When they say how this went down, Ted Bundy did this too. Oh, she was laughing with me and she kept bringing up this test and she couldn't remember, dude, like just look, we, to make our world a better place to even out the evil, let's take down the bad guys and girls. There's some right. women that do some bad things too. Let's take them out. Let's work together, okay? Come together. You can still do your podcast, not just you. Everyone can, they'll be talking about this case for 10 years, okay? <clears throat> it's not gonna go away off a guilty verdict or a not guilty verdict. It's not. They're still talking about John JonBenet Ramsey. Like they're still writing books. Like, so, you know, I'm grateful that I was able to meet the families, you know, and I know they're not all happy with me, I know that, but that's not, I don't really work for them. I work for Abby and Libby. And I know that sounds weird. You can come get to know me. You can try to learn more about how I do these cases, why I do them, you know? So let's see if anything else you want to talk about, my friend. Um, that blonde chick again, she says, would anything about Ron Logan be allowed in Richard Allen's trial? Yes, um, because you have to allow the defense mm -hmm. to make a... Uh, a case and you know part of that case is hey my guy didn't do it ron logan did you know so um in order to make that case if ron logan was involved and they haven't admitted it then they're gonna have to do that you know they're gonna have to say that you see in my opinion the 2019 press conference now looking back with richard allen in the picture to me the 2019 press conference was about them when they say going in a new direction I think they were trying to break Ron Logan because they knew that he was was involved, but he thinks that um, you know they, they they think that you know he he has he can tell you know who the other people were, but I think that the new direction from 2019 was going from uh, trying to break Ron Logan to going after his accomplice. 
-hmm. And that's why where, where I think the, the new uh, sketch comes in and stuff like that. And, you know, we don't know how long they've had Richard Allen on their, uh, their right. radar. They could have had him on their radar back in 2019, because remember he said um, when, when they talked about um, he said, we think we were onto something in the beginning. Well, a couple of days after the murders, you know, here comes Richard Allen saying, yeah, I was at the trails the other day. I just wanted to tell you, I didn't see anything. I just want to. And that's confirmed, you know. right? You have confirmation from some close people. Yes, yes. That, yeah, he definitely did. He turned himself, he, you know, he went, he didn't turn himself in. He went to the police. He told him I was at the trails that day, but I didn't. Because see he anything. was seen. Because he has to poke his head Because he was him. seen. <laughs> exactly. He's because the guy somebody black, saw him. Right? He's the and guy when black. he saw that description about the girl that saw him, he thought, I better come forward. If he's wearing a scarf, right? He has like a scarf on or something and he looks at her in mm -hmm. a certain way. And right. she says, now, when I talked to um, our PI that we, we know, he brought up some good points about why wasn't this guy grilled? Like, like yeah. he says he's there near the murders and didn't see anything weird. Okay. Who are you? Why? Who? What's, what's up with you? Why were you there? Yeah, well, exactly. There walk. Yeah, why are you there? Okay, there's no school. They know the school's out, right? Because his daughter mm -hmm. went to school with the girls, right? Well, I guess she was out of school at that time. Oh, okay. So, but, um, so he knows. She had but graduated he knows. already. Yeah, but um, he knows but... there's no school, right? Right. There's yeah. There's, and and oh, he's walking the trail by himself. He just went out there by himself. What yeah, are you doing just out decided there? to go on out there. Yeah, I just went out there. Oh, okay. Well, somebody said they saw someone that looks like you dressed in all black walking by the plaza. So yeah. did you walk by the plaza? See, this is what police do. They don't show us anything. We don't see what they have. They're holding secrets. And so everyone's confused. And I'll tell you, that's a very creepy thing. If Richard Allen did go back and say that, he is placing himself at the murder scene within feet of it. Where, why was that never talked about? And this would go to the exact reasoning of the cops that like flying just right over their head. <laughs> you know, like, and the Logan thing, flying right, right over their head. That and also true. to answer the blonde chick's thing, you're right. A defense attorney has subpoena power. He has access to all the files. So the murder investigation on these, he gets everything, all of it. It's discovered. Whatever's discovered, the prosecution and the defense both get it. So he's mm -hmm. going to see all the evidence against Ron Logan. He's going to see everything against Richard Allen. Okay. Right. Anything that's gonna... been investigated in this case. It's part and of the I would also say to the blonde chick, I thought you were just saying like some blonde chick, but that's actually her name. <laughs> Look up this murder case. It's called the Cat's Paw Murders. It was in Connecticut. Cat's Paw, like the heel of a shoe. They used to call them Cat's Paws. I want you to look that up and you'll see how the defense attorney uses another suspect. And they have to try this guy like three times. It's one of the longest trials in Connecticut history. They had to keep going back because they had this strange evidence against somebody else and he kept using and it's called the cat's paw murders this guy uh jamie t says how tall is richard allen well he's five six right isn't he well, five the, five to five seven the or booking something information there? from the murder uh from the murder charges says he's five four okay that's not bg bg right. is like six feet tall that's not a short guy on the bridge and mm -hmm. i know they're trying to they're trying to this guy on youtube's trying to Put the picture next to him and like it's like it's like you know just so there's a lot more about richard out in the voice they're matching his voice oh that's him like it's like just just focus on ron logan as the bridge guy the question mainly now is was richard allen called on a burner phone was this set in motion were they going to murder somebody a, a student a child <clears throat> maybe very possible you said this place was kind of ruffians would hang out there and they go do drugs, right? And they could hide out there, yeah. right? So, yeah, it's, it's kids really, that have drinking parties and stuff out there. Yeah. So, what's your uh, what's your take on the the uh, probable cause for uh, Richard? Do you think it should be released? I do. 
And I just read the probable cause on Salinas that we talked about. It's actually public and stuff. I see it. It's on Reddit too. Some of it redacted too. Those probable cause, they were, they have a lot of information in there. I didn't realize that. I don't really get to see a lot of probable cause warrants. Mm -hmm. I don't really like always get that material or look for that all the time. There was a lot of stuff in there. So if they unredact Richard Allen, we're going to see what they have. We're going to see mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. I think it's, sure. I, th I thought legally they're supposed to release it. I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, 24 hours. Little... Yeah, so, the law in Indiana is 24 hours. Yeah, we're way over 24 hours. So mm -hmm. again, they're going by their own rules. They're just throwing everything out. This guy doesn't have an attorney. He's writing letters that are now printed in the Daily Mail. He And, and this is like, this is where it's going to start spinning out of control. Like it's already, and, and you're going to have an angry mob mentality for oh, yeah. about two weeks here. If they do not release that, you're going to see something. It's going to be bad. Uh, Gail uh, Salinas's full name is Marcos Salinas, I believe. M-A-R-C-O-S. Um, Kathy, Kathy Apgar, Bill in the house. Bill, you here, Bill? Bill, where's Bill? Hey, hey Kathy, what's up? You want to meet me behind the Pizza King in Delphi tonight? I got a cheap bottle of Boone's Farm and Hillary's out of town. So you come on over and see me, Kathy. Now, Bill, now, that's what got you in trouble with Chooch. Again, now, do you do you get flack cool. for having a sense of humor on your channel? Do yes. you get the people like this guy, <laughs> like they start, you know, typing it up? Yeah, they uh, they're always like, oh, what do you what do you find so funny? Why are you laughing? You know, yeah, and it's yeah, like. Yeah. You know, I these podcasts where in the YouTubes where they just sit there, you know, and, and then they, you know, I mean, that's who wants to watch that? You know, I mean, no, I think I think you bring a, a unique perspective to it. And I'll tell you, I've been on cases where the blood of the killer was mixed with the victim's blood together and they got off yep. together mixed like in a cup. OK, and they got off. So I totally understood when I first met you. And I tried to get to you for a long time. I think I emailed you. I don't know if you ever saw. I tried to reach out to you, I think, many months ago. I, I might have. I get so much freaking email. I might have no, missed yeah. it. So, I mean, I, but <laughs> I finally pressed the issue with a mutual friend of ours. And I said, I want to talk. I saw your thing. And I was like, I need to talk to this guy. Like, I want to. Mm -hmm. The way you're doing it is it's like it doesn't have to be done like um, Perry Mason. It, mm -hmm. The truth can come out from a from a, a guy on boots on the ground in his in his uh den it can come out and, that, and that's why it's like sometimes it doesn't matter how you say it you could go to court wear the suit put the tie on I'm an expert witness and nobody believes the guy they don't want to believe him some guy comes in with a t-shirt yeah it was this guy and they believe him so it's like there's just there, look I've never seen there's a lot of podcasts on Delphi right now. I can think of like five of them that are going pretty strong right now, right? Mm -hmm. You have you have some competition. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have like your own market of like the Delphi, Australia, people writing in, people from Europe. I see quoting, people wrote me from England. Like, what do you what do you know, mate, about the Delphi murders? You know, I'm just like, wow, this thing is really like, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the guys there in Australia is uh, he just moved to Patreon because he's got really thin skin. You know, he likes to start things, but he, you know, he doesn't like it if you respond to him. Right. And he's one of these family blamers, you know, saying family accusers. Oh, that stuff yeah. is really that stuff, again, is crazy. And those people need to be careful, too. If we look at what defamation is right now with Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, Alex Jones, they, the people from Sandy Hook just whacked Alex Jones. They just put him out of business. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He can keep blabbing his, his mouth, but pretty much he ain't making a dime the rest mm -mm. of his life. No. He's in trouble. <laughs> his house, bye. All his assets, bye-bye. So these people who say, uh, the Patties did it. And Kel, be careful. Be careful. I think I saw Alex Jones the other day driving a 98 Saturn. <laughs> So, 
Well, Dale, who am I talking about? Oh, I wouldn't be talking about Joe, would I, little Joe? Well, no, but you see all these defamation cases. Everybody's suing. I'm in a defamation case right now with a murderer, mm -hmm. okay? And I kind of know how that's going to end up when a judge starts to realize this guy could be a murderer and he's trying to sue reporters. Like, it's so, but, you know, you basically just can't say whatever you want. That's what the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing kind of showed us, even though he allegedly is a beater of women, yeah. right? He still won a multi-million dollar lawsuit. So that's why, you know, look, I'm like I said, I'm not the murder sheet people. I'm not like mad at them. I think they're important because look, they leak the Ron Logan search warrant and they stamp their name all over it. Okay. They risk going to jail for that. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> and obviously there's no one's going to jail and nobody cares and that's fine. And it's in, is it in the public's interest? Could they claim they're whistleblowers? Sure. Did somebody leak it to them? That's that person's fault then. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think somebody should figure out who their source is. Yeah. I, I and I, and I think, uh, before all said and done, I think we're going to, I think we're going to hear who their source is. Um, I don't know how it'll come out, but you know, I, like I said, I talked to him the other day and, um, you know, they, they weren't about to reveal their source, but I kind of hinted around that I felt like, well, what's their end game? Let's, let's put them on the spot right now. What's their end game? I'm not sure. I, I think the main thing was to get their, uh, Ooh, that old ring. Wow. I know it's a new phone. I haven't changed Whoa. it yet. I just got the phone. I haven't had a chance to change oh, yeah, I it. I have that ring. Um, while ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i think i think the main thing was to get their uh their name out there they you know they want to make money with the podcast which you know i don't blame them i mean i don't know. either yeah i mean if that's what they want to do that's fine I don't hollywood does it that, every but... day they, they're yeah. doing what hollywood sells for millions of dollars mm -hmm. yeah so i don't i don't fault them for that but um, for the longest time, you know, they, they pretty much accused Tony Klein of being the killer and they have just ruined this guy's life, you know, and they need to be and, careful. Mm -hmm. because and I, and I caution they, people, oh, they make, yeah. I caution them all the time in my chat because they say, well, Tony Klein's a terrible person. Why? Because murder sheet told you that. Yeah. Right. You don't have any proof. These people they were talking to, they talked to his stepson, you know, <laughs> you know, if you talk to my former stepkids. They're probably going to tell you a lot of bad stuff about me. And I guarantee you 85% of it won't be true. I won't say a hundred because, you know, I can be a dick. You know, but, well, uh, well, and also look, I'm not, I don't know Tony. I don't know what he's done. I don't really know Kagan. I don't look, if they did something bad, then you punish them for what they did. We yes. don't pile on a double murder charge onto somebody and could potentially be convicted for life in jail. Like you, I'm not saying they would be, I'm just saying like, and look, the way that I think the murder sheet people, I'll stick up for them for a minute here. They're, they're smart in the way, cause they've been on court TV like 20 times. They've been on news nation. The way they say things is very passive aggressive. It's yes. very sheepish. Okay. And that's good for them. Right. Cause they're not mm -hmm. really saying it. They're just kind of like talking to you with their, voices and they have these nice little voices on the podcast and i've challenged them to a debate i've challenged everyone if you guys want to do a debate we'll do a little four screen gallery and we can yeah. all talk about ron logan and we could talk about richard allen but really look the richard allen thing is kind of like a mystery right now the ron logan is the first piece that needs to be debated Mm -hmm. We don't know what they have on Richard Allen. We have no idea. And we may, we have, we may have no idea on November 21st or 22nd either. True. Yeah. We have no guarantee. What yeah. are you hearing now from family members or people close to the case? What's the sentiment now? Are they just all kind of the elections over? They're waiting for the, the, the hearing now. Yeah. The families want the PC uh, sealed until the trial. Oh, they do. Which, yeah, which Interesting. Wow. I don't see that happening. I don't. I mean, I, I'm i all for the families. I've always been uh, on their side. And if that's what they want, then I hope that's what happens for them. But I just that don't could see be a long happen. time. 
But that could be to the trial. That, that could be, be years like, because, yeah. you know, they're saying his trial is going to start in March. I guarantee you it won't. No, it's not going to start. I'd be surprised if it started a year from now. Right. So, you know, um, I, I but they do. They want it. Um, Becky especially has said that she wants it uh, sealed until the trial. Wow. Um, Black screen media. I know you talked to TK. Is he understanding of the backlash he's gotten or is he angry at the Internet? Well, <laughs> if you if you haven't heard this, let me play <laughs> it for you. you? <laughs> let me play it for you here. Oh, I'm going God. to give you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let me find it real quick. Uh, okay. Your speaker winks. Just got a phone call from Noblesville, Indiana. Hi, this is Anya, and I'm with Kevin. I screamed at him, go fuck off, murder sheet. <laughs> Motherfucking ruin my goddamn life. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's what Tony thinks of uh, oh my of uh, the internet murder sheet. What's going oh, at on? Least, right hey, now. at least the murder sheet people called them, and at least they uh, stuck their neck out and tried to interview them. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what I when I saw him at that. Yes, that was that was. TK when was Schmidt. that? What year is that? That's important, too. When was that? Oh, when this was just recently. This was oh, just like really? two weeks ago. Oh, really? Wow. because I asked Anya and Kevin at the uh, at the press conference. I was sitting right behind him and I said, so uh, I hear you guys called TK. And should they go? Yeah, I go. How'd that go? <laughs> and they go, not well. And I said, yeah, I heard. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I mean, any lawyer could defend both sides of that, right? Like if they, if Anya and Kevin have an attorney on a defamation charge, they, their lawyer could. That's a, that could go either way because I mean, people, people say so many things. What are you going to go sue every person on Reddit? Like how <laughs> you're going to get them? And how profile is the murder sheet? How many views do they really have? Twenty thousand? How many doubt? You know what I mean? It's like so. I don't know. Look, it's. I'll tell you though, if you seal that PC the whole time, there's going to be a problem. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be there's going to be advocacy groups that are going to sue them. They're going to sue the state of Indiana. The the news I heard Fox 59 already did. They're going to start filing lawsuits. Yes. Yeah. Um, I talk with Russ McQuaid from time to time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, the, uh, 59 is definitely, Fox 59, they're definitely, um, they, they put something in some kind of uh, appeal or legal, legal. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of what to call it. It's not a lawsuit yet. Motion. Yeah, yeah it's a motion. Thank you. It's a motion um, to, hey, you know, you guys are breaking the law here. You're breaking the law. Yeah. Yeah, I are. mean. Yes. And, and that's the problem is they're using general rule number six or something like that. And I can understand, you know, that they say, well, if, you know, if there's, if the, if the public could be hurt by this, or if the, you know, if, if the case could be hurt. And the thing is, you know, you're not going to get any more publicity than we've already gotten. Like yes. you said, there's no way this is tried in Carroll County. No, no way. It's an automatic change of venue. Um, so they're not going to hold this thing in Carroll County. So they're already going to have to get a change of venue. And there's nowhere in this country you can go where you're not going to be bombarded by this. Especially, I think, if you are keeping the thing sealed for that long, that they are actually doing more harm to their case. Yes, because, right. You know, people are like, you know. Because, well, because, then, because then when it's revealed, it's like a boomerang effect or like a slingshot. Right. You're, you're building up all this suspension, all this tension. You better have something damn good in there when you release that. If that comes out like a dud, man, people are going to lose jobs. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, some of these cops and, and these investigators and the lawyer, they're going to lose their jobs. Because, I agree. because you get the nation coming on to in the true crime industry is so big right now. These people are jumping all over people like in different states, they're coming from other countries. Like, yeah, I, I just look, they can redact it. What I would do, I mean, if you if you ask me, I would meet them halfway. 
release right. it and redact some of the things that if it says DNA, redact DNA. If it says there's a murder weapon, redact where it says, you know, give a little bit of suspense, but give them something. Calm them right. down a little bit because I've talked about in my other cases in interviews about this biological, physiological need to know. It bothers us when we don't know the truth on something. It physically affects us. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the public, that's what free press is. Those are the mantras of the media. Right to know, need to know, public safety issue. Those are the three things. If all those things check off, you publish. Right. You publish. Right. Even if you had two, maybe one, the right to know. <clears throat> oh, the public doesn't have the right to know. Well, you guys keep telling everybody in your pressers, in all your little daily mail, The Sun, ABC News, NBC, you guys keep shoving it down our throat. You make us have to know. We need to know. So right. that's what my book talks about, the media and the true crime industry, about how we don't solve things and we sell t-shirts and podcast downloads. And, you know, what are your, what's your motivation? What's your motive here? Why are you talking about two little girls getting murdered? Why? Is it for you or is it for them? And, and, and so I kind of put this in people's face and, you know, look, I get adverse reactions. I'm sure you do too. You have pretty good reach. You're getting a lot of people. And like some of the other people we know mutually, they're getting stuff too. They're getting attacked. Right? The comments, right. I told the FBI agent on this other story uh, case. And I was like, oh, you see the comments? And they were like, Oh, are they saying something negative? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, are they saying it about me? I'm like, yes. Oh, I didn't want to read the comments. Don't. Maybe it's better you don't. Yeah, if just this is what people people are nasty, man. There's there's beautiful in us and there's nasty, right? Mm -hmm. And you're gonna get, and I've noticed that in the true crime industry, it's a polarizing thing. People, it's the be all end all of a crime. There's nothing really worse than that, minus like you never find the body or you don't know what happens to the victim. That's really the only worse thing than murder is, is not knowing if they're dead. Right. Some of these families, I always feel for these That's families. Terrible. Oh God, I can't, it, it makes me flutter. If, you know, some of these people have never found their child ever. You know what I I'm mean? I'm reading a book and, right and now that, about it. Yeah. No, I'm, I hope to help some of those people. I really hope I can someday, but um, yeah. so yeah. Uh oh, she's back. Yes. I'm reading a book right now that's about a, uh, a murder case from, I believe, Oklahoma, where there were uh, the trailer was set on fire. Three three bodies were found and two girls missing, two teenage girls missing. Oh, God. Wow. They've never found them. You oh, know, really? So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. This um, the blonde chick here, she says, uh, She's back. Uh, it's a good question. You know, she asked about what could possibly have been taken out of uh, Richard Allen's home. Well, most of it was found in his yard, stuff that was buried, um, stuff in his shed. But very important here, I think, very important, what they took from his house, bundles of black clothing. Now, that tells you somebody from that house was wearing black clothing, or at least they think they were wearing black clothing. BG's not dressed in black. And so. the witness, like you said at the plaza, if she sees somebody in black, right, mm -hmm. the teenager... Yeah, I mean, we have a witness that saw somebody dressed in black, and now they're saying we took black clothing out of his house. And like I said, BG's not dressed in black. So, yeah. Well, yeah. it's a, we're an hour and a half here. It's been a great conversation, but I'm going to have to get going here. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you very uh, much, Rick. Excellent guest. I'm probably going to have you back because I feel like there's so much more we could talk about. Yeah, so, and uh, things will change. Things are going to evolve. And, you know, I'm, I'm always going to have the door open. I'm not going to, like I said, be so involved in it. But, yeah, anytime, thanks to your audience. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for sticking up for these girls and for putting pieces together. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for all you guys over this year or two years because I think it's important. And it, it is entertainment, but it's also it's important to try to bring justice and, and, and some healing for the for the families and hopefully someday these girls can kind of rest in peace right yeah maybe uh maybe here in the near future we can get uh, a panel together with yeah. uh, you and jason and yeah and hopefully uh i i've been talking to jen coffin dapper i'd like to get her on here too sure um sure. 
So anyway, thank you so much for thank joining us, so everybody. Much. It's Chris Todd. The book is uh, Forest for the Trees. I've dropped his email address a couple of times in there. And uh, he's making a very generous offer to just give the book away. He's not trying to make money, folks. He's just trying to kill a killer. So right. <laughs> thank you so much, Chris. Thank we'll you, see you next thank time, you. my friend. God bless. All right, everybody. So that was our discussion with Chris Todd. I thought it went really well. Um, and he'll send you the book so you can check it out. Um, I've read it. Uh, it's it's very interesting. You have you get a real perspective of what it's like to beat your head against a brick wall, <laughs> because that's basically what he's been doing uh, with the, the local press and the local uh, some of the family members and things like that. So anyway, I want to thank you all for coming out here. We're going to have to have another line uh, line. We're going to have to. Do, I don't do lines anymore. <laughs> We're going to have to have another live. I'm sorry. I didn't get to ask him about the Evansdale thing, but we will next time. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a live stream on Evansdale in about two weeks. So yes, thank you so much, everybody for tuning in. Thank you to my super mods, Tahara and Lil bit. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for all your great questions for, uh, for being such a great audience. Um, remember folks, we're still uh, making money here for Lucci's house bully rescue program. Um, this, uh, particular time, um, don't have as much to donate to them because I'm not working, but, <laughs> but I am, uh, I am, uh, doing well on the channel and everything. I'm hoping to expand that and, uh, you know, we'll see how things go in the near future, but Lucci's house bully breed rescue program. Um, I am at least splitting the ad revenue with them and, uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, maybe I'll get another maybe I'll get a part-time job or something so I can have more money to give to them because uh, they do great work and, uh, and I love them. They're fantastic. So if you got to like, you know, every, every they, they do a thing called Friday where they ask you for your money that you would spend on a cup of coffee at McDonald's or something, send them a $5 bill, you know, just get on there and, and uh, send it Venmo cash app, whatever. You think you can even donate right there on Facebook um, so, you know, five bucks, you probably won't miss it, but those dogs will really appreciate it because they use it to get their medicine, their uh, teeth and stuff again, and also to train them so that they are, you know, prepared to go and be in their forever homes. So that's what they try to do. They try to find them forever homes. So we have some dogs in there that have been like in the, in the shelter for like two years. So thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, Keep watch. We will probably be having another live very soon. I don't know if it'll be tonight, but if not, it'll be tomorrow. I've also got a couple more videos that'll be coming out. Um, I have been thinking about, been batting the idea around about actually reading chapters from the book um, on a members only live. And then people can comment and, and you know, ask questions and, and uh, tell me what they, what they think of it so far. I've actually given, um, uh, there's a few people, um, in the chat that I've actually um, allowed to read everything. I'm up to chapter seven now. I should be a lot farther. But what happened was I what had happened was I had written chapter seven and I somehow lost it. It just went blank. So I had to read it. Tahara told me, oh, this was my favorite chapter. I told her, well, I wrote it twice. So <laughs> anyway, folks, thanks for stopping by. Remember, as always, I wish you peace, love, leather and bass. And we'll see you next time.